Got another question on the enthalpy and entropy topic. So this question has got aspects of both. So the link to the questions in the description of the video so if you want to try it first and then watch the video for the answers. So a couple of definitions to start with. Enthalpy change of solution is the enthalpy change when a mole of a compound dissolves. You could have a solid there or a solute. Enthalpy change of hydration is the enthalpy change when one mole of aqueous ions is produced from one mole of gaseous ions. Part two now, the difference between the enthalpy change of hydration of the sodium ion and the magnesium two plus ion, it's all down to the different charge and the different ionic radius of the two ions. So magnesium two plus has got a greater charge and a smaller ionic radius than sodium ion. And so therefore its enthalpy change of hydration is gonna be more exothermic because it attracts water more strongly. Next part, the different species present. So we've got the gaseous ions at the very, very top. And you can either do the, like I have, you can do the aqueous magnesium two plus with your two gaseous hydroxide ions here or the other way around. So you could leave this as gaseous and make them the aqueous ones. Moving on to the calculation now. So you can see I've added the names of the enthalpy changes at play. And a reminder that this one here, the hydration enthalpy for the hydroxide ion needs to be doubled because you've got two moles in your cycle. Hess's law states that the sum of the enthalpy changes in each route equal each other. So if we want to find that, we just need to take that over to the other side and flip it to sign. So there's the numbers in. And just to remember that um, enthalpy change of hydration of hydroxide ion needs to be doubled. And the answer comes out at minus 2694 kilojoules per mole. So question switches to entropy now. So when you melt or boil H2O, it's an endothermic process. The delta H is positive because energy is needed to overcome the hydrogen bonds or the intermolecular forces between the H2O molecules. And the second bullet point, when H2O melts or boils, there's an increase in disorder. So the entropy increases. And in the gaseous state, there's actually significantly more disorder. And so the increase in, in entropy is much greater when water boils and when it melts. And for the final part of the question, we've got to show that ice melts at zero degrees C. Basically, we need to find out the value of delta G at that temperature. If it's zero or negative, that means the ice will melt spontaneously. So I'll just go through the calculation. So there's the process that's taking place when ice melts. Um, we've got the delta H value. Notice it's saying kilojoules per mole. We've got to calculate the delta S value, the entropy change for that process. So that's the entropy of the product minus the entropy of the reactant. So we get that. It's 22 joules per kelvin per mole. So you've got to be careful with your units. So feeding the numbers into the Gibbs equation, we've got the delta H, minus the temperature, which has to be in Kelvin, put Kelvin there. And what I've done here is divided the entropy change by a thousand. So it's, it's in kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. So it matches the kilojoules per mole there. Anyway, Delta G comes out at that, which is effectively zero. And that's why melting is feasible at zero degrees C.